I want to show you this video right here. This guy right here is a concealed carry owner. He's a concealed carry guy. And he's standing there. It looks like maybe he's in a, I don't, I don't know what kind of store he's in. It looks like a dry cleaners or maybe it's a postal thing because this guy's got a box. There are boxes all over the place. There are packages here. Maybe this is a post office. I don't know. If it is, that'd be interesting because if it's a federal post office, then we know that's a gun-free zone. And we know what happens to law abiders in gun-free zones. They become victims because criminals won't obey the laws, as you'll see here in a second. A criminal is going to walk in. Actually, three criminals are going to come to the door. One of the criminals is going to walk in with a firearm in this possibly gun-free zone. And if you disarmed yourself, then you wouldn't be ready for what's about to happen. Let me show you this. And let me just say, I am not going to play the part where this guy pulls out his gun and shoots the assailant point blank, okay? If you want to see that, if you want to see the full video, I will leave the link to, as a matter of fact, here, I'll, let's go. I think I posted it on my Twitter feed. Let's see, because that was somebody else's. Yeah, here, you know what? This, this person right here, Jen, posted it. So I'll leave you a link to that. If you're not, if you're not subscribed to me on Twitter, do so because I, I post stuff there that you probably want to see there. There's the link right there. If you want to see this whole thing, cause I'm going to play it just short of him pulling the trigger on this, uh, this assailant, this armed assailant, watch this. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no audio on this. So I'm just going to kind of talk through it. You can't even tell this guy is armed, but it's always better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Little do all these people know their lives are about to be placed in mortal jeopardy. So here comes, you can see the feet of the assailants right now. So you got three thugs who don't care about human lives other than their own. So you got this one guy, he's going to walk in with firearm. You got this guy over here and this guy over here. They stay at the door and kind of spread, you know, spread out left to right. This guy pulls his gun out. He already has his gun in his hand. You can kind of see it against the, the contrast of the white light here. Watch, I'll try to stop it in time. Okay, there's his firearm right there in his left hand. This guy right here, super concerned, but super prepared, is aware of what's going on, aware of his surroundings. So now he reaches in his waistband for his concealed carry. He's got it. He's got it pulled out, which means he already has the, the slide racked. He already has a round in the chamber. He is already ready. If you're going to carry a gun out in public because you want to be ready to protect yourself and others or people in your zone of influence, family members or whoever, it's probably a good idea to save yourself that step it's going to take to do that, which is going to cause a noise, which is going to draw attention to yourself. It's good to have that thing already chambered, which this guy obviously does. Now he points it at him. Now he hasn't fired a shot yet. He has not fired a shot yet. So I want YouTube to know I have not played this video to where the uh, the incident, you know, the um, the assailant takes a nosedive. All right, I'm not going to show you the rest of this. You can imagine what happens. Three shots, point blank. He did not give this guy a chance to harm anybody. You have to assume when somebody pulls out a firearm on you, and it was unprovoked. There's nobody that's done anything wrong to warrant such an action. You have to assume that that gunman, this, this hooded gunman right here, is intending to take the lives of every single person in this establishment. You cannot assume that he's going to do anything less than that. If you do, it could cost your life. And then this daddy will never go home to his babies. Or this husband will never make it home to see his wife. Or this guy will never go home to see his wife. Or this lady right here will never go home to see her husband and her kids. You have to assume that's what's going to happen. Unfortunately, this is an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth kind of situation. Only you don't let him get an eye. You don't let him get a tooth. You don't let him get a life. I'd rather this guy go down. And this is basically what you have here is on the spot public servanthood. On the spot public safety. This is, this is called self-empowerment. This is called, I ain't calling 911, I'm calling 1911 or whatever this little handgun is. It looks like a, you know, some kind of subcompact. I don't know. It's hard to tell what kind it is. But the bottom line is, this tool right here is the tool that these people right here in the house want to take away from you so that they, that in their minds, what they're trying to convey is, we're going to take these guns away from you so that we can save children. We want to we want to legislate your right to protect yourself and everybody in this 
postal establishment, wherever they are. We want to take that right away for the sake of the children. Don't ever listen to that kind of euphemistic nonsense and garbage. Gun safety regulations ain't what it is. It's human control regulations. They're trying to control you and they're trying to legislate you out of your right to protect yourself and others. They want you to depend totally on them, but you can't because the biggest mass murder and violence promoters in the world is still the U.S. government. So the U.S. government, note the irony, it's the U.S. government who's trying to enact gun control regulations, which is people control regulations. They're trying to institute gun violence so that they can remove violence from society. Nobody does violence like the U.S. government does violence. Nobody. Nobody does mass murder like the U.S. government does mass murder. So it's, it's ironic, it's psychopathic, it's inconsistent, and it's hypocritical for the U.S. government to say, we're going to take guns away from you for your safety, especially when you look at the annals of history and you find out how it went for the people who actually disarmed themselves for their psychopathic rulers. So bravo to this guy. Now, this gun that this guy has, it could be a fake gun. You don't know that, and you're not going to wait around to find out. He could he could have a little brother, and he's like, hey, let me have that gun. I'm going to pretend that I'm going to hold up a, a, a post office and try to get all their money. Bad idea. Bad idea. Because this guy right here, and this guy right here, and this lady right here can't afford to wait to find out if it's a true firearm or not. Even if it's got that little super, you know, fluorescent orange tip. Doesn't matter. Somebody could have painted, painted a fluorescent orange tip on the, the end of a gun to make you think, oh, this is just a fake weapon. I don't know why they would do that because nobody would take them seriously if they did, but they could deceive you. You don't have time to wait around. A lot of people are down on this. This guy right here says, I guess, let's see, what does he say? I guess I'll be the first one to say that's not real unless the good guy had a gun that fires tiny bullets at close range, there should be some blood and an exit wound. Instead, there's nothing, not an ounce of blood. You're not, guys, you can literally not see any blood and, it, and there'd be blood all over the place. This is not a 4K video. This is not a high resolution video, but there were people out here that were downing him for actually doing that. It's like, you didn't have to take the guy's life. I'm not interested. If I, if I am armed, in a particular place, and I see somebody produce a gun, jeopardizing the lives of everybody in there, I'm not interested in waiting around uh, and playing, playing footsie and patty cake with this guy. If you play stupid games, you're probably gonna end up with stupid prizes. So if you wanna see this, I'll leave the link in the, uh, in the description of the pin, or I'll just leave it in the description of this video, but there it is in the chat. If you wanna take this, uh, if you wanna take a look at what, ex what exactly happened after this. This guy does not let up, and I don't condemn that stance. Good for this guy. But that's what, that's what this legislation seeks to do. Eliminate the power possessed by good guys. They want to eliminate your power. They want to make you powerless. They want to make you dependent on the government. Don't let it happen. I want to hear your thoughts about this, guys. You think this guy went too far shooting this guy blank, uh, point blank? What would you have done in this situation? Do you think he should have just maybe brandished the weapon and give the, the, this guy an opportunity to drop his weapon? Do you think that would be a wise move? Leave your thoughts about this in the comments section below.